If you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. If you dislike it, please tell me why so I can improve. I've talked about having the breast development before. I've discussed that here, so if you want to have a look at that, feel free to go over there. But I wanted to talk more generally about the effects of oestrogen as I think they are affecting me. Now, first of all, let's just be general about the effects of oestrogen. Oestrogen increases the likelihood of blood clots, it encourages fat deposition, it's anti-inflammatory, it causes water retention, uh, it also counteracts OCD and to some extent is an antidepressant. I'm obviously taking the oestrogen and I don't know to what extent, I know there are three categories here, to what extent it's a pharmacological effect, to what extent it's psychosomatic and to what extent it's a placebo. As far as saying a pharmacological effect is concerned, what I'm talking about is suppose I was in a coma and I was being given this oestrogen, it would be altering my body in some way maybe, or maybe it wouldn't be, I don't know. That's the kind of thing I'm saying. If there was no intervention whatsoever, I wasn't aware of taking it, that would be a way of working out whether it actually had a pharmacological effect as opposed to psychosomatic and placebo effect. You might be able to find out in the general population, if it turned out that men were being exposed to oestrogen by mistake, and they weren't aware of it and it had some sort of effect on them, then that would be a way of telling. But obviously this is not happening by mistake, this is something that I'm actually doing on purpose. Now to move on to the placebo effect, now why am I distinguishing that from the psychosomatic? Well, because a placebo effect is not just a question of perceiving things in a different way, it's the actual physical, maybe sort of semi-pharmacological effect taken from the fact that I know that I'm taking oestrogen, that means that maybe my own body will be doing something physical rather than just happening in my mind that will change what's happening, like perhaps upping my own endogenous oestrogens and therefore having an oestrogenic effect. And finally there is obviously the psychosomatic effect which is not being able to perceive when a heap becomes a mound, for example. Obviously people are not just breasts, people are people and they have other things going on in them. I'm going to go in on about the feminist stroke sexist significance of this uh, later on so I'm going to mention that but at the moment this is what I'm going to deal with. I feel the need to run away and hide from situations of conflict more at least I'm noticing my fear of those situations and I just want to avoid conflict. I feel things that I normally found like lifting up the compost bin or whatever slightly more difficult than it has been in the past. Colours seem brighter and connected to that is definitely something going on connected to the strength thing. I also feel less impetus to do things and the reason I think I feel less impetus to do things is that I think I'm motivated by this sort of obsessive compulsive thing going on all the time and that's something which seems to be fading. I also feel a sense of euphoria. Now it may be that I feel a sense of euphoria because I'm finally doing something about the fact that I feel uncomfortable with my gender. Also there may be a sense of euphoria because of the antidepressant effect. And I do feel that I can leave things alone a lot more. I don't need to obsessively go on and on and on about stuff. But another thing which I think is happening, and I don't quite know why this is happening, is that I feel that where there's a discussion or an argument going on, I actually get more interested in the interactions between people than I do about the subject matter. And as well as that, I also feel very concerned about conflict on an emotional level rather than anything else. And I also get this thing where it feels like there is this whole level of stuff going on underneath between people that I've never really noticed before. And that's really interesting. And I think basically it's making me less sort of Aspergery. But obviously there are female Asperger's people, so I don't know how that works. It's probably quite therapeutic in some ways because it makes me less OCD. It also makes me feel very positive about the way my life and the way things are going, which worries me a little bit because it's like a sort of bipolar thing. Is it like, do I feel too positive about these things? And now we come to the question of my inner sexism. What am I really doing here? Is it, if it's purely psychosomatic or rather purely a placebo effect, all this emotional stuff, and what is what I'm doing actually channeling my anima, the female principle of my subconscious? Is this just me producing some sort of stereotypical female thing? It's revealing my stereotype of women rather than what women are actually like. I mean, there may not be anything that women are actually like. It could be that every woman is, obviously every woman is an individual, 
And so what am I projecting here? Am I projecting some sort of stereotype, some sort of prejudice caricature of femininity rather than actually being more feminine? Is this really what women are like? Or is it something else? Is there even a fe single female identity? Maybe there isn't. But if this is really different, is that real difference actually to do with the estrogen as affects perceptions and so forth? Or is it more to do with other effects of the estrogen which are not to do with a gender difference. So, because men produce their own endogenous estrogens. I just wanted also to say what I'm doing obviously, and I've not said this before now because it's a phytoestrogen, that is a herb that's estrogenic, and I just want to show you a few examples of it and I'll explain why I've chosen this particular herb. Okay, here we go. This is red clover, which is what I'm using. Uh, it contains an estrogen known as trifoliol, which is very similar to the type of estrogens that are found in the human body. These are pretty poor specimens actually. I could have found much more ripe uh, blossoms than those. But it's the actual blossoms that have the effect. So in eating them like this, actually ingesting estrogen right now. Other estrogens that I've tried, or the other things are alleged to be estrogenic. I want to explain why I've chosen what I've chosen. Not keen and isoflavones. One of the definitions of estrogen, as far as um, pharmacology is concerned, is something that increases the mitosis of endometrial tissue in vitro. Now, something that increases the mitosis of endometrial tissue might not be estrogenic at all. It might be a carcinogen. It might increase mitosis because it's caused cancer in those cells, made them into tumour cells. So that's not a very good definition, and isoflavones answer that definition, but I don't really think that's the right definition. So I'm not going to be taking it from soil or whatever because I don't think those are very healthy in a form of estrogens. And obviously you've also got the xenoestrogens, the ones that don't get broken down in the body and convert into water-soluble forms so they build up in the body, cause loads of problems. I'm not going to do that either. Not salvia. Why not salvia? Salvia officinalis that is. Because it dries up milk and what I'm trying to do here is to lactate. Now I'm not going to lactate if I take salvia officinalis. So I've taken it as a stopgap measurement, I've run out of trifolium, but apart from that I'm not going to do that. Not Cirrusifia grassamosa either, partly because that's said not to be estrogenic, although it might be a negative herb, i.e. a herb that has the effect as a whole without any of the individual constituents having the estrogenic effect. But apart from anything else, I feel like its therapeutic index is fairly small, it makes me nauseous, it also made me very irritable, so I left that alone. Not humulus either, not hops, because hops exacerbate depression. In fact, hops are a complete waste of time as far as I'm concerned, I don't really understand why any herb is used as hops. So it's trifoliol. Because trifoliol, as in trifolium potense, is similar to the endogenous estrogens in your own body. And I sort of feel that's probably the safest thing to do. And I actually feel really that I'm getting on so well with it that it's just brilliant. And so that's it for today. And I'll uh, see you tomorrow.